I got a passel of pencils here. A passel, I tell you, that's somewhere between a bunch and a bazillion. Watercolor pencils for days. Hello, minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Reese is here helping me get these pencils all in order. This is one of those episodes I've been wanting to do for probably two years now. I bought these Albert Durer Faber-Castell watercolor pencils uh, a while ago. They actually sat on my shelf for a long time. I don't use watercolor pencils a lot. I like watercolor pencils. I think they have some really great qualities and properties. But you know, old habits just kind of die hard. Anyway, recently I bought some Caran Museum Aqua Rails. And in the watercolor pencil world, the Albert Durers and the Museum Aqua Rails by Caran are widely considered to be the top two. Their artist quality, most of them are relatively light fast. Most of the other watercolor pencils out there you get are not light fast if that's important. So I had these. I wanted to try the Museum Aquarelles, and I've done a fair bit of testing, and we may talk about those in another video. But through the testing, I'll, I'll just tell you that the Faber-Castells are kind of starting to become my favorite. Most of it is not quality related as much as it is just personal handling characteristics that I really love. And then I was sent these Gold Faber Aquas. Faber Castell sent these to me to try. These are new in their line. They're sort of a reintroduction of their next tier down, what they call their creative studio line, which is the craft and student line. I've been testing those. So what I want to show you is the whole Faber Castell watercolor pencil line. Show you how it works together. Show you a few differences if there are any. There aren't a lot. And talk about why I really like Faber Castell and their watercolor pencils. Thanks for your help, buddy. Well, of course it tastes like wood. You're not supposed to chew on it. All right, well, there's probably hardly an artist out there that hasn't heard of Faber Castell. As you might guess, they've been in business a long time. Founded in 1761, and they are located in Stein, Germany. And they're just really well known for uh, pencils, pens, and fine artistic and writing instruments. So as I mentioned, I got this Albert Durer set probably two years ago. I haven't done much with it. I do some with uh, watercolor pencil, but not a lot. Actually, a couple months ago, I started making notes for doing another watercolor pencil episode. And uh, about that time, Faber Castell contacted me and wanted me to send the new Gold Faber Aqua line. So what's the difference in these two? And let's talk about the characteristics of each of these, okay? First of all, the Faber-Castell watercolor pencil, the Arbrick Durers, are one of the top of the line. Um, I personally rate this, and I haven't seen all watercolor pencils, but from what I've seen, uh, I personally rate this and the Museum Aquarelles from Caran d'Ache as the top two. And they're fine pencils. I have some. These are them if you don't know what I'm talking about. And I've done a fair amount of testing, not done a lot of art, but I have done a fair amount of swatching and technique testing on both of these. And I've started to uh, lean towards these. Number one, they have a 120 color range. Almost double that of the Museum Aquarelle, so they have quite a color range. I started leaning towards these because these are just a little harder. So here's a Museum Aquarelle. It has a really soft, kind of buttery feel to it, and that's nice. Since I primarily use mine for sketching and line work, um, I like the slightly harder feel of these, although these go down in a very nice, smooth lay down as well. These are not the same color, so when I activate the, these, you're not going to be able to tell much. Extremely vibrant uh, payout on the color. Again, this is more of a sap green. It's not the same color. So, so both lines have extremely uh, intense color payouts when you activate them. I think one of the things I liked, not only about the slightly harder leads, um, because it just kind of matches my drawing style, but I like the fact that what you see is what you get a little more than the Museum Michael Rell. Meaning that when you put down a color, Karen Dosh, it looks like one way, and then when you activate it, it, it's like so much different. This was really, really close 
to that. So I didn't get a lot of change in color once I activated it. It was the color that I expected. And that didn't always happen. On some of the uh, Karen Dosh it did, but on a lot of them it didn't. It was very different. That makes a difference when you're drawing. Let me try a different color in comparing the Museum Aquarelles. And again, this is not a, a comparison video between that brand, but I did want to just talk a little bit why I chose Albert Durer's over Museum Aquarelles because I know the, the Museum Aquarelles just have the absolute best reputation. Now as I lay that down, this is Prussian blue. These are both Prussian blue. As I lay that down, that does not look like Prussian blue. This is Albert Durer. When I lay this down, it does look like Prussian blue. And this was one of the beefs I had about the Museum Aquarelles is, is before you activate them, they do not look like what they're supposed to look like. That doesn't do a whole lot for your um, visualization. See, this is a, a little brighter, a little more brilliant. As I look at these, they start to dry. This looks more like my what I would expect Prussian blue. This looks like Prussian blue mixed with Payne's gray. So um, another reason that I chose Albrecht are the size of the range, the laydown characteristics, the predictability with color when it's activated for all those reasons. Well, now that the Albert Durer and the Karen Dosh have had a chance to dry, I still think that the Albert Durer is closer to Prussian Blue. Here's M. Graham, and you'll see a little bit of difference. Get that glare off of there. A little bit of difference, but much closer to this than to that, which, which that looks like Payne's Gray or Endanthrin Blue or something like that. But I did want to... Just let you know why I'm steering in that way and why uh, I tend to like Fiber Castell the best. Let's talk about the difference in the Gold Fiber and the Albert Durer. The Gold Fiber is a new line for Fiber Castell. What they've done is they've taken the uh, Art Grip pencils. If you've ever seen the Art Grip Aquarelles by Fiber Castell, they've sort of put them into this line now. And it's the same grade. They call this their Creative Studio quality. And they have the Gold Fiber regular color pencils, the Gold Fiber Aqua. There still is not a lot of light fastness info out there. There isn't any on their color chart. There is on the Albert Durs, but there isn't on the Gold Fiber Aqua. So it's a good bet they're probably not real light fast. The vast majority of watercolor pencils out there are not light fast or have limited light fastness depending on color. You know, going back to the Albrecht Durer's and the Museum Aquarelles, those two probably kind of top the list in terms of light fastness. So for that reason, also, uh, watercolor pencils have never really been, for me anyway, a primary art medium. I am trying to see about how I will incorporate these into my art since they are, do have better light fastness ratings. But even in the Albrecht Durer's and in the Museum Aquarelles, you have a number of colors that you have to watch out for. Thankfully, their color list does include the light fastness ratings for all the pencils. And it's even marked on the pencil itself. But getting back to the gold fiber, one of the things I like about uh, all of Faber-Castell's line, and, and I think this is true of Karen does too, but uh, if you are a user of Polychromos, the regular colored pencil, or the gold fiber colored pencils, permanent colored pencils, or either one of these watercolor pencils, the color numbers and the colors are the same. So this is a good set to get if you're looking to save some money. I have the 24 set. There are a total of 48 colors in the whole line. If you get a permanent Carmine 126 from the Albrecht Durves and the 126 from the Gold Fibers, you have the same color. Well, let's take a look and see if we can uh, spot any differences between them. We're going to try this permanent Carmine. Really nice, high density lay down. I like that. Let's fade it out. Alright, same color in the Gold Faber, Gold Fiber. Wow, now see, I expected this to be harder and a little less soft. It's just as soft and just laying down just as much color, at least in the dry form. Get my water brush here. Now, the Albrecht Durer is actually just a little darker. So this is a little brighter, slightly different color. Just extremely nice color payout. Interesting. 
You see no difference in the color payout. I'm not going to test every color here. I will tell you that I, I sort of came to the same conclusion when I was making these, these swatches. So these are the gold flowers and these are the Albrecht Durers. And I really didn't see a lot of difference in the way they went down and the way they activated and the intensity at which they activated. So it could be that the only thing you're deciding is whether you want light fast pencils or not. Whether you want a fatter pencil that will give you some lay down. I will tell you also there is another set in the Albrecht Durer line called uh, the Magnus line. And they are Albrecht Durer's uh, extra fat. They're like five millimeters so they're almost double the size of this and therefore like laying down really broad coverage. There's only 30 pencils in that line. I wish I had some or had gotten some for this episode but I didn't. Let's try a different color. Now I have uh, this 107. It's a little annoying to me. I guess I figure uh, in the craft line people are not that interested in the name of the color. But they did not, they do not put the name of the color or the light fastest ratings on the Gold Fabers um, at all. And even their older uh, art grips, same thing. They just did a number. So I have the same color from the Albrecht Durer line. This is cadmium yellow. So let's put down a nice heavy lay down here. Now let's do the gold fiber. Again in the lay down, very little difference. I am seeing this one a little lighter than that one. In softness, consistency, and lay down, they're almost identical. Now I'm going to, in the center here, I'm going to put this art grip. I wanted to see how it compares to their older. Well, that's pretty good too. So application, I'm not seeing a lot of difference. Very rich, very bright. It's what I would expect from the Albrecht Durs. Gold fiber, not quite as much. So you're going to get a little less payout, but almost. I mean, really, very, very little difference. Let's try their old art grip. Yeah, it's good too. Yeah, so I'm pretty impressed with that. So it seems as though, really, the only difference is there are some slight differences in color. This is a little more wine colored in the uh, permanent carmine. This was a little more fire engine red. So I think this is probably more accurate. I think really the only differences you're looking at is do you want to be circumspect about your light fastness ratings? Do you want a fatter pencil and do you want the extended range? The Albrecht Durer has by far the biggest range with only 48 here and 120 here. Something like the gold fiber is a really great way to get into colored pencils, especially if all you're going to do is sketching. Well, let's do a test where we check uh, how close they are to a pigment of the same kind from a regular watercolor palette. All right, so what I've got here is good old ultramarine. So this is the Albrecht Durer ultramarine, the gold fiber ultramarine, and I just happen to have a, a core palette here handy, so we're just going to go with core which has a, a fairly standard ultramarine. All right, so in the center here, I'm gonna paint some ultramarine from Core. About what you would expect. Looks like a good standard ultramarine blue. So under here, I'm gonna draw in ultramarine, scribble it in with the Albrecht Durer. And on the lay down, that looks like ultramarine. Now let's go over here and try the gold fiber. Same thing, looks like ultramarine. That's pretty accurate. Not as accurate. This looks more like a cobalt blue over here. So that's probably a difference. Another difference. Bigger range, fatter pencils, slightly more accurate color renditions. Okay. And that's not a surprise. You would expect that out of a top-of-the-line supply. All right, everybody, thanks. I know that was a quick one. Uh, I just wanted to show everybody what's going on with these Faber-Castell watercolor pencils. What I'm currently liking the best in using, something new. And I hope if you're considering watercolor pencils, you'll add these in consideration to your shopping list. Thanks so much, patrons, for watching. Uh, just by way of announcement, I'm going to be doing a studio tips video for you. 
and it'll involve some of my uh, best watercolor pencil tips. So I hope you patrons will hold on for that. Check that out when I post it. We will see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.